You're watching Connection TV with Pastor Titus Lee. Thanks so much for joining us today. You are about to receive a fresh word of insight and truth that will take your life to the next level of growth and victory. Be blessed and enjoy. Welcome to Connection TV. My name is Pastor Titus Lee, and I am so glad that you have joined us. Do you know why I'm holding this phone in my hand? It's because I am grateful every time that you pick up that phone and call. When you call that number on the screen, 773-471-3370, my heart rejoices because there are times that we need someone to pray with us, to encourage us, to um, edify us or build us up, and we're grateful that we could connect. So throughout this program, if you have any needs, when you're hearing the teaching and you say, you know, oh, I, I need someone to pray with me about that, dial that number and we will connect with you. Also, I want to say thank you to every friend and partner that helps support the Operation Link Up team program. That's part of what we do. We empower, we mentor, motivate, and mobilize teenagers uh, in the Chicago region. And thank you for helping us do that with your kind gifts and your prayers. It makes a difference. Well, I'm glad that you've joined us today. This uh, is a four-part series. This month, we're in a four-part series on uh, fruitfulness, bringing forth fruit, spiritual fruit in our lives. And I am so glad that you're watching because today we have a hot topic. It's powerful. I'm going to be talking about it's time to bring forth or just bring forth, bring it forth. It may sound simple, but there are complications in bringing anything great forth in the earth. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to speak to each person that is watching. I ask you to minister to them in a special way. Use me as your, uh, oh God, as your uh, oracle to minister truth to them in Jesus' name. And can you say amen and amen. Look with me to Luke chapter one. Luke chapter one, verse 35 and 36 and 37 is powerful. Luke chapter one, verse 35. And it says, and the angel answered and said unto her, being Mary, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Mary's life was radically interrupted by a message from Gabriel, one of the archangels. He interrupted her life and said, you are highly favored and chosen by God to bring forth the Messiah, the Son of God, the Son of the highest, to whom's throne there will be no end, the salvation of Israel and the world. You're chosen. Can you imagine being a teenager and having your life interrupted by this injected prophetic word of truth, the fulfillment of hundreds of years of prophecy that the Messiah would come? unto Israel and to the world, and you find out that you are the vehicle through whom he will come? Wow, that is powerful. But more than that, it was miraculous. Because Mary asked the question, how can this be, being that I do not know a man? Many of you have read this, you're familiar with this text, very possibly. She said, I'm not sexually active with my fiance or anyone else for that matter. How, how am I going to conceive? And this is what the angel said, and I want you to catch this. This applies to you and I today. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Holy Spirit will come on you, and you will be overshadowed. The, the glory of the highest, his presence will come upon you, and this holy thing, may, might I add parenthetically, will be conceived. Do you know it's possible, just like Mary, for you and I to conceive spiritual things? Oh, yes, spiritual things. You must embrace that. To be fruitful, there is a conception process. 
in the uh, agricultural world, and in botany, it's known as a pollination. There's, there's pollination of plants, cross-pollination for flowers to fully mature. In the, the uh, in humanity and, and then in the mammal world, it's conception. And in the realm of the spirit, I also refer to it as conception. God wants to use you to bring forth in this season. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. However, for the great gift that God wants to bring into the world through you, there has to be cooperation. Cooperation is the yielding of your will and your way unto God. You know, nothing in the realm of the spirit is forced on you. You don't have to do anything for God, but you get to do. And I know you're watching and you want to bring forth spiritual fruit. You want to see your family born again. You want to see your coworkers transformed. You want to see your community develop. You want to see um, uh, the kingdom of God come on earth as it is in heaven. You want his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. You want to see the fruit of God's word manifest. But there has to be a cooperative spirit and attitude. Second Chronicles 16, 9 says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. This is dealing with perfection of trust or faith. Even in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, what a powerful statement. God is looking for one who has a perfect heart or a complete heart or unfractured heart, one that wholly trusts him. You see, Mary was that type of person. She was a young peasant girl. She was not famous. She was not a woman of fortune, but her heart was perfect toward God. And she had favor on her, preference. God preferred her over all of the other ones he could have chose. He said, now I want Mary. That's the one that I'm going to use to bring forth this holy thing. That's what the King James Version calls it, this holy thing, this sacred, secret thing. Wow. There are some holy things, as the Messiah was entrusted unto Mary, but there are some holy things that God wants to do through you. He, he, he wants to, to use you as a womb in the earth. And we must be fertile, believe it or not. There are some people who are barren when it comes to spiritual things. They have not brought forth the ideas and the concepts and the innovation and the creativity and the revelatory things that God has, would have done through them because they've been closed in their spirit. They have been detached from God's wisdom because perhaps they've been distant relationally. They have not talked with him and prayed and worshiped and read his word as they could or should. But now is a season of transformation for you. Oh, yes. It's a season for you to receive the divine purpose of God for this time in your life, to carry his divine purposes and then to produce them in the earth, which means that you're going to have to expand your capacity to receive. One of my favorite scriptures is in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 and 10, for it says, For I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him. The key phrase there is it has not entered into the heart. It has not been conceived in the heart. It has not been mixed with faith in the heart. It's time for you to open up for greater things. Maybe you've been hindered in the past, hampered. You've been held back. But I say in the name of Jesus, every hindering spirit on the creativity that God has given you, every hindering spirit on the new things that God wants to do through you, everything that has hindered you and hampered you, I say those chains and those yokes break off of you. Those bands be loosed from you. Now, I want you to stay connected because when we come back, we're going to look deeper into bringing forth in this season, you being fruitful in this season, because there's going to be some supernatural conceptions in your life. and You're going to bring forth the purposes of God in the earth. Stay connected. We'll be right back. 
Do you know that a sign of real spiritual growth is when you bear spiritual fruit? In this month's four-part DVD series, you will learn how you can be productive in good and bad times and how God's Word produces evidence in our daily lives. Be sure to get this month's four-part DVD offer entitled Bring Forth Fruit for only $30. Log on to ConnectionTV.net or call 773-471-3370 to place your order today. Hi friend, for over 25 years, Operation Link Up has been making a difference in the lives of teenagers in the city of Chicago, Illinois. We emphasize three things, mentoring, motivation, and mobilization. Will you take a moment and think about how your prayer and your support can help us continue helping them? Take a moment and watch this. We've seen a mother who lost her son. We've heard strategy on how to connect with bully teenagers. We've also been equipped with insight on how to teach our youth how to war and take authority spiritually. Operation Link Up is a teen program that holistically empowers teens to excel. Since 1996, Operation Link Up has been mentoring, motivating, and mobilizing youth between the ages of 12 to 18 years old in Chicago, Illinois. Through our weekly empowerment programs, Teens are equipped to have good character, excel academically, master the performing and martial arts, learn audio and visual production, as well as be positive community shareholders. In spite of the hopelessness and discouragement among today's teens, Operation Link Up continues to shine bright and make a difference. We ask you to stand with us that we may continue to empower this generation. Your prayers and monthly financial gifts will enable us to expand our outreach efforts and services to teenagers on the southwest side of Chicago. Will you stand with us today by giving a special gift toward the mission of Operation Link Up? Your one-time gift or a monthly gift of $25 will enable us to continue to impact teens in a relevant way each week. Together, we can make a difference and reach this generation. Please go to ConnectionTV.net today and click on Operation Link Up to give your financial gift toward this vision. Or you may mail your gift of support to Connection TV, P.O. Box 437-740, Chicago, Illinois, 60643. Thanks so much for standing with Operation Link Up as we empower today's teenagers to excel. Your support is so vital as we strive to reach many of the hurting and hopeless teenagers of Chicago. We say at Operation Link Up, before you send them to jail or send them to hell, send them to us and we can, we can make a difference. So will you pray about giving a one-time gift or a monthly gift of support to Operation Link Up? It will be so very appreciated and it will help us accomplish our goal of reaching teenagers one youth at a time. Thank you so much for your consideration and continue to pray for us and we will continue to reach our teenagers. Together, we can make a difference. God bless you. Are you looking for a place to grow and fulfill your spiritual destiny? Then join us at Southside Worship Center. We are located at 7724 South Racine in Chicago, Illinois. We are a vibrant ministry where people care and overcome. You'll receive dynamic teaching and anointed worship along with relevant programs for the children, teenagers, and adults in your family. We have two dynamic services on Sundays at 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. and on Wednesdays for Word Workout at 7 p.m. Be sure to check us out at sswcchicago.org or on Facebook. We hope to see you soon. Welcome back. We're talking about bringing forth in this season, there is going to be a conception in your life like it, a, just as there was a supernatural conception in the life of Mary. It's powerful and profound how God chooses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Maybe you've been overlooked. Maybe you've been dejected or rejected. Perhaps as Mary was. But God will choose you and raise you up to bring forth his purpose of love and grace and kindness and goodness and meekness and temperance, of mercy, of creativity, 
of insight, of revolutionary ideals that can transform a community or a high school or a junior high or the team that you're on. You are to be a womb in the earth. You know what a womb is? It's, it's, it's that part of a precious mother's body in which a child is conceived and, and gestates and then through that womb, the baby comes into the earth. Do you not know that the church is the womb of, of Christ in the earth? He is the, the husband, as Ephesians 5 says, and we are the bride and we produce his purposes and his will in the earth. I want you to grasp this. For it to happen, we must cooperate with Holy Spirit that we may be fruitful. Every supernatural encounter that you and I have with God, you will come away with something. I'll say that again. Every supernatural encounter that you have with God will cause you to come away with something, a holy thing. It may be a song, a melody that you've never heard before. It may be poetry that you've never written before. It may be a business design that you've never conceived prior to that point. It may be an invention. It may be a concept for ministry that is new and fresh and unprecedented. When you have communion with God and the Holy Spirit is invited in, new things come forth. You can't connect with him and stay stale and old and barren. <laughs> no, you can't. You will bring forth. You remember the song, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place? Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, you are welcome. Come on, lift up your hands right in your home and just say, welcome into this place. Welcome, welcome. It doesn't matter if there's anyone around you. No one was with Mary when Gabriel spoke to her about her purpose. Right in your home, just say, Lord, I welcome you. Come on in and drench me with your presence and consume me with your glory and cover my weakness with your strength. Oh, blanket me with your blessed presence, oh God. Because it's there where God will entrust his precious truth and the jewels of heaven to you. What I mean by jewels of heaven is, is the new, th the new things that you've never heard of prior to that encounter in prayer and in praise and in worship. Oh, hallelujah. The angel said, Holy Spirit will come up on thee. He will overshadow you. This was um, a similar experience to what Moses had. Gabriel told Mary that the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. You will be overshadowed by the Spirit. But do you remember what happened with Moses just as a confirmation of this whole concept in Exodus chapter 24? Flip or click or turn there with me. Exodus chapter 24, verse 15 says, And Moses went into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. Now notice the connection between a cloud covering the mount, 10, and Mary being overshadowed. Verse 16 says, And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the, mount, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him into the mount, and Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. And of course, you understand that Moses was in the presence of God. He was consumed. He did not hunger. He did not thirst. He was full of God's presence. And it was there where new conceptions took place. What happened there? Moses had an unparalleled experience in the presence of God. And what happened was that he received the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments the blueprint for the tabernacle, which later was also applied in the temple of Solomon. He received that there. He received the designs for the garments that the priests would wear. He received the furniture design in the presence of the Lord. Think about this. Let's parallel this to today. In the presence of the Lord, God gave Moses a pattern of how to plant and raise up a physical church building or tabernacle. He gave Moses a pattern of how to design clothes. 
He gave Moses a pattern on how to uh, design and, uh, and construct furniture. This is amazing. It all happened in the presence of the Lord. Don't tell me that God cannot give you everything you need in his presence for you to bring forth. But understand that as it was with Moses, so also it was with Mary. You have to surrender to the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord is fullness. It's fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures evermore. For you to bring forth in this season, there are some new things that you're going to experience. And you have to be open. Take the brakes off. When you're praying in your home and it feels like you lose control of your tongue and songs start coming out and tears start flowing, don't put the brakes on and draw back. Just let the Lord have his way. Because he's doing something new. He's doing something fresh. He's trying to bring forth a conception in your life. You see, to be entrusted with the holy thing, the holy design, the holy revelation, the holy innovation that God has for you, you as a person, the local church must be yielded and cooperate with the overshadowing of the spirit, that covering, that exceeding brilliance, that brilliance that covers our flesh with his presence, our weakness with his strength, our finite knowledge with his infinite wisdom. It happens in his presence, which in conclusion today, I want to just look at how Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, is so critical then in us bringing forth. Remember the angel said, the spirit shall overshadow you and you shall conceive this holy thing. And Mary said, I don't understand it, but uh, be it so according to thy word and I will. Let it happen. And it happened. She brought forth. Moses went into the presence of the Lord. That cloud covered the mount, which represented Holy Spirit. And it's there where he brought forth newness. So also you must then embrace the work of Holy Spirit who leads and guides into all truth who enables us to receive and conceive holy things. Let me give you several points for you to embrace as you get ready to conceive new things. I'm going to run through them quickly, so get your pen out and uh, write them down or put them in your phone or your tablet. First, make room for the Holy Spirit. Reverence him. Reverence and honor his presence in your life and in your time alone with God in prayer and worship and the word. Number two, don't grieve Holy Spirit. According to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, well, Ephesians 4, 29 and 30, let your words be words of, of humility and kindness that you will not grieve Holy Spirit and cause him to withdraw from your life. Hence, you will not receive the greater things that God has for you. Don't grieve him. Number three, don't quench the Holy Spirit. When you feel like you're losing control of in prayer or in worship, don't put the brakes on him. No, relax. And let him have his way. Quench not the spirit. Number four, don't lie to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> According to Acts chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. In other words, he knows all things. Be honest and transparent. Allow him to overshadow you. Walk in honesty and in truth that you could receive the greater things of God. Number five, yield to the direction of the spirit. Sometimes he will prompt you to spend a little more time in prayer or in the word, or to go to a certain place or visit a certain person. That's the Holy Spirit prompting you. Yield to his direction. And six, travail for the new things. That word travail means to groan as a mother does when she is about to bring forth the baby. Isaiah 66 verse 7 says, Would God bring the birth and not give strength to bring forth? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Prepare to pray and push in prayer and bring forth the holy thing that God has entrusted to you. God is still releasing great things in the earth through his people who trust him. That includes you. But be willing to cooperate. Even when you don't, don't understand how God is working, say this as Mary did, be it according to your will. I don't totally get it, don't understand it, stand it but so be it. Or in another way of saying it, amen to it. Let it be done, Lord. Also, establish connections with people 
who are bringing forth great things in their lives, as Mary did with Elizabeth in Luke chapter 2. Stay connected with other people that are pregnant in the spirit and producing fruitfulness. And then lastly, worship the Lord and thank him for what he entrusts to you. The Magnificat which was saying and quoted by Mary in Luke chapter one, verse 46 through 56, is what she actually said and sang after she conceived of the Lord. She conceived of God, amen. So I want you to prepare for new things. Come on, I want everyone to say it with me. Everyone watching, everyone listening, say new things are coming forth in my life. Say it, the old is over, the stale is gone, God brings forth fresh praise, Fresh ideas, fresh innovation, fresh insight, fresh pattern, fresh business plans, fresh ministry approaches. My best is before me. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to know that this is your season to bring forth. Get ready. It's going to shock everyone around you. The better things that God has for you are coming forth in this season. I love you so much. Stay connected. And know that your best, your absolute best, is yet to come. Be fruitful. Do you know that a sign of real spiritual growth is when you bear spiritual fruit? In this month's four-part DVD series, you will learn how you can be productive in good and bad times and how God's Word produces evidence in our daily lives. Be sure to get this month's four-part DVD offer entitled Bring Forth Fruit for only $30. Log on to ConnectionTV.net or call 773-471-3370 to place your order today. Are you looking for a place to grow and fulfill your spiritual destiny? Then join us at Southside Worship Center. We are located at 7724 South Racine in Chicago, Illinois. We are a vibrant ministry where people care and overcome. You'll receive dynamic teaching and anointed worship along with relevant programs for the children, teenagers, and adults in your family. We have two dynamic services on Sundays at 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. and on Wednesdays for Word Workout at 7 p.m. Be sure to check us out at sswcchicago.org or on Facebook. We hope to see you soon. Thanks so much for watching Connection TV with Pastor Titus Lee. We hope that you have been blessed and encouraged by today's teaching. We know that God has great things for you and your best days are ahead of you. We would love to hear from you. Feel free to visit our website, which is connectiontv.net. While on our site, you may listen to a message, explore our teaching archive, sign up for our newsletter, give an offering of financial support, or request prayer for any need that you may have. You may also call us at 773-471-3370 for prayer needs or to request our message of the month. Please mail your letters and gifts of support to Connection TV, P.O. Box 437740, Chicago, Illinois 60643. We look forward to sharing with you again. Until then, let's stay connected.